What is the ego? Oh, um, you know, I was trained as a psychoanalyst, mm -hmm. and the Freud's definition was that the ego is our capacity to perceive accurately uh, reality around us, material reality, and find the appropriate uh, way of responding to it. And that created in psychology a major concern of having a strong ego and not mm -hmm. do anything that would kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, sh uh, shake up the, the ego. And this was in conflict with what you hear in uh, s the spiritual world. The ego is always bad for you, whether it's strong or weak. If it's, it's bad for you, whether it's strong or weak, you want to get rid of it. It's it's in the way of your spiritual uh, development. So now the way uh, the uh, ego appears in uh, the context of consciousness research, particularly the psychedelic research that I have done, it's uh, something that's forged, among others, the experience of birth. When we go through the birth canal and it sort of gives us a sense of being separate from, from everything. It's kind of imprinting, forging, sense of separate identity. And also uh, the experience of that confinement when the environment is hostile. It gives us a feeling that we should be strong and should be sort of in control and should be... Uh, you know, dealing with the with the world from a from a powerful, solid uh, place, and then of course in the psychedelics you experience ego death. Mm -hmm. So there is tremendous fear in professional circles because they have the definition of Freud, the idea that if you lose the ego, you will you'll be weakened. You somehow. will not be able to handle everyday reality. You will not be have the accurate perception and the ability to respond adequately. What is it that dies in uh, the process of death rebirth? It's really a false ego, it's something that... Uh, the false self. When you, when you lose that ego, it doesn't impair in any way your uh, ability to function in the world. Like uh, suddenly you won't be able to tie your laces, shoelaces, or buy your hamburger or whatever. <laughs> but it really... It it spills of this this false ego, which is your sense of uh, identity and being in the world, the way it was experienced in uh, in the birth canal, forcing the the sense of uh, very clear uh, separation between you and the external world. Of course, if you experience that ego death, you'll find out that all that you've left is now the uh, to use Marx, Karl Marx, you use the manacles, you make the restrictions and the limitations, you'll be much much freer in the world without losing the capacity to relate to material reality. Mm -hmm. And in some way you will also be able to function better because you will have more uh, emotional freedom. You know, so that's uh, Something that could be described by the by a story by Franz Kafka, which is called The Barrel. It's a story about something like a mole who creates, who digs under the ground and then creates, expands it and has a little home there. And he's sitting there for a while and says, great, I have a home. <laughs> and then this paranoid idea comes and says, there could be an enemy who gets here, I'm cornered, I have to make an emergency exit. <laughs> and then goes back and for a while feels comfortable. And then another idea says, there can be two of them. <laughs> so uh, to, to live with this kind of an ego in the world, you try to do things to be safe for security and so on. And we do it on a, on a global scale. Like when there was the danger of atomic war between the United States, mm -hmm. and, you know, the collective pro ego produce, producing yeah. enough of the uh, of the uh, rockets of the mm -hmm. of the you know we, we are so so concerned about be, being safe that we create a very unsafe world. When if, I think this estimate was if two percent of the nuclear arsenal were exploded, it would be over for for everybody. Mm -hmm. There was. Uh, some of it was expressed actually in funny sexual language. There was some discussion about the Russians and the Americans. And, and the, an American general says, uh, we have to harden our missiles. <laughs> the Russians are a little harder than we are. <laughs> so they were counting the missiles and be yeah. sure that they have, you know, so that fear, the irrational fear 
suddenly leads to behavior that actually is, is uh, dangerous. Yeah, that makes sense. And people also act that way frequently in, in uh, everyday life because they, they feel threatened by something that is not out there, that is a projection of this fear. So if you can get rid of that ego, you, you feel that you're more part of the world. Mm -hmm. the, the boundaries, the, the separation is not that that firm, you know.